Hello, Granny Opteryx here. Remember, I have channels on Rumble, Bitchute and Minds. So if I suddenly disappear from this one, never fear. Just do an internet search on Granny Opteryx and you'll find me on one of them. OK, now to business, which today is the BBC and Karma. If anyone doesn't believe in the existence of karma, then prepare to change your mind now. So I opened up the mail online on Wednesday afternoon to find a video of which I suppose that for copyright reasons I can show you only stills um, of some demonstrator or other up a ladder on the plinth at the front of BBC's flagship building, which is called Broadcasting House, a place in which I spent many miserable hours. Anyway, this guy was having a fine time chipping away at the statue of Prospero and Ariel. Just in case you don't happen to know the backstory on that, first of all, when the BBC was set up by Lord Reith, that pillar of the establishment who started off the idea of public broadcasting by refusing, for instance, to allow the playing of records by a famous violinist because she was a divorcee. He was a very high-minded man, was Lord Reith a true Scottish Presbyterian type. Oh, um, mm, this is also from the Daily Mail, March 2007, which begins thus. His name is still a byword for high-minded broadcasting, but Lord Reith was an adulterer and family tyrant who was so profligate he left just £75 in his will. Who says so? His own daughter. As the founder of the BBC, Lord Reith has long been seen as a model of moral probity and rectitude. Towering in stature, he was six foot six, you know, um, towering in stature and intellect, he's one of a handful of historical figures whose name has become an adjective. Uh, we talk about Reithian principles, you see, round here, uh, used in this case to describe the high-minded standards that he once set down for broadcasting. Anyway, that set the tone for the BBC, a public face of probity hiding a seething underbelly of spite, vicious ambition and, well, child abuse and it's right there over the front door with that statue by Eric Gill of Prospero and Ariel. These are two characters from Shakespeare's play The Tempest, by the way, uh, and they bring to mind the idea of a magician, the, the central authority, who has a messenger made of the elements of air and fire who sings and plays musical instruments. I mean, it's a nice idea for the new idea of radio and just the characters, in fact, to encapsulate the BBC when it had pretensions to broadcasting quality stuff. But as it turns out, it wasn't only Lord Reith who was stained with hypocrisy. Appropriately enough, the artist who created that statue the embodiment of BBC ambitions to a higher purpose and to tradition and high art, uh, the artist Eric Gill turns out to have been, um, well, not without his own little peccadilloes. Uh, peccadilloes which included his daughters and the dog. Yep, that's what I said. Of course, I don't think that was general knowledge at the time, mind, so uh, he was just known, uh, he was just a well-known artist and I, I really, I don't think anyone should blame the BBC for commissioning that statue or leaving it there. 
because once a statue is there, it's there. What I do blame them for is their stand back position on the woke people who threw that statue of an 18th century trader called Edward Colston into Bristol Harbour last year. Oh, they're all very woke at the BBC when the hoodlums who did it were found not guilty by the jury. Some said that this would open the door to further vandalism and I believe there's little doubt that the BBC is, among others, the sort of media um, environment that encouraged this attitude. All this lefty woke stuff, it's all cut from the same cloth, isn't it? And karma has good and proper come back to bite the BBC in the backside. And frankly, it couldn't have happened to a nicer organisation. For the record, I object to the destruction of any public monument and I'm disgusted by what this man has done to a work of art because it is a work of art. It's a damn good statue and it encapsulates a lot of what the BBC should be. It's not, but it should be. And it's a very nice example of the Art Deco style as well. Uh, but I, I do have to confess that my, me, that my feelings are somewhat tempered by what I can imagine is going on in the BBC boardroom right now as they try to work out what their company angle is going to be on this incident. That's not the worst of it, of course. There are gill statues all over London and on buildings that the BBC uh, used, do own or lease or used to own when they set themselves up. I can imagine our nightmare of London, Sadiq Khan, jumping on the bandwagon soon. Well, that was a sneeze and my mother always said that when you sneeze, uh, it means it's true. Uh, so what was I saying? That uh, our nightmare of London, Sadiq Khan, will jump on the bandwagon. Oh yes, and he'll have them all taken down if he can. His commission for diversity in the public realm would be just itching to put something diverse in their place. You don't think I'm joking, do you? Or being satirical? No. I'm sorry to tell you that I'm prophesying. Meanwhile, if anyone in the uh, Metropolitan Authority has a spare Eric Gill statue they don't know what to do with, let me know. Um, there's a spot in the corner of my garden that would suit it very well. And let's face it, if I put any garden gnomes in there, I'd have the thought police round in two shakes of a lamb's tail for some violation of the rights of the vertically challenged. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like subscribe and share, share, share.